the members of the MPS show, one of the longest running My Little Pony fan podcasts in the world, of English language My Little Pony fan podcasts in the world. Of course, there are plenty of others in other languages and across other networks, such as Brody Radio Germany and uh, Every Pony Radio all the way in Russia. So here's a little taste of some Southeast Asian hospitality, and they're going to give us a panel called How to Be a Content Creator Presented by the MBS Show. So Norman, one of my good friends, all the way from Johor Bahru, not very far away, give it up ladies and gentlemen. Wow, thank you so much guys. That's really something. That's a really round of applause. Um, Jill, could you, Jill, could you please uh, take a picture of the audience? Sure. So I can, so I can just put it on the what you call this Twitter. Yes. You're on air, people. Wait, just a photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, cheer, everyone, cheer. Woo! Hello, go on. Kalang wave. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So anyway, um, so welcome to the MBS show live at Fiesta Siponi Con, and today I will be doing a presentation on how to be a content creator. That means a YouTuber with loads of YouTube cash. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So anywho, I am your host, Norman Sanzo, host of the host of the MBS show podcast, and next to me is Julie the Dragon. And what do you do? I actually have my own. Can you hear it? Yeah, I actually closer. have my own uh, Tumblr account where I put photos. If you've noticed me going around taking photos with Twilight, my plush, I actually have a Tumblr account where all her travels is online. Uh, Sally, I don't think I've tagged it yet. <laughs> no problem. <We'll, laughs> I'm sure that will make it more popular so people will find out what you do. And lastly, uh, it's not on the list because um, scheduling. So we also have uh, Daniel Anthony. Hi, hi, hello, the mic hates me. Mike hates me anyway, my name is Daniel Anthony. I am a former uh, yeah, show host, co-host thingy on the MBS show. I used to help them out as well, but uh, work got in the way, and life got in the way, and then this con got in the way. <laughs> so therefore, um, I'm here to help them out, just uh, move the panel along and things like that. And feel free to stop us anytime if you have questions, all right? All right, all right. So first up, reasons for starting a con, sorry, reasons for starting. Um, usually it could be interest, boredom, <laughs> or to experiment, or even sharing, and for the fun. Or all of the above. Oh yes, that's true. <clears throat> so usually when it comes to interest, it's like I'm interested in sharing my views or sharing what I want to do with others. But for me, is this one? I don't know. Hello? Oh, oh there okay. we go. I think the mute was hate, off. It hates me, no, but the, doesn't hate you. No, the mute was off. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, no, for me, it was basically experimentation and sharing. Somebody asked, why don't you do it? I said, okay, I'll try. And yeah, it started from there. And Daniel, I think you're another content creator too, so... Yeah, you're, you're what? Okay, Con? it's a little bit of a complicated thing. I am a musician. I am also founder of Crystal Empire Records, which we talked about yesterday during the musicians panel. We deal with music, and uh, it's com almost a completely different ball game. It's uh, you know, it's not as visual as YouTube is. But um, my day job is that I'm a journalist. I am uh, also a newscaster with a channel called Kini TV in Malaysia, and uh, that job is another <coughs> thing on its own. It earns me my income. It earns me the money that allows me to pay for this con and stuff like that. So therefore, um, yeah, I am involved in the content creation process on different levels. Now here's the problem, because it's a day job, I kind of don't want to do it when I go home. <coughs> well, sometimes you have to work to pay the bills, but if you love doing what you love, I guess, well, you should carry on. Yeah, sometimes you have to work to pay the bills, sometimes you have to pay the bills to work. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, next up is the drive, the motivation, and the inspiration for, well, starting it. So. Like Jules here said, it was encouragement from friends or family, also mostly friends, yeah, true. <laughs> and also sharing your hobbies and well, trying to imitate or improve on something. Like, I'm sure you've all seen other people do something and you think, hey, I can do better, so I'm going to prove that theory. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Like in my case, I just keep on going, even if somebody says it sucks. I've got um, some weird people following my Tumblr account, but let's just ignore that for now. But basically, I don't have many uh, followers. It doesn't matter to me because I enjoy doing it. I like taking Twilight around, taking photos, and posting it up for whoever wants to see it. 
I, I think Norman, you're following me, right? Yeah, I'm following yeah. you. Yeah, I've got a, one person which I'm glad is following me. <laughs> you can't call your followers weird until I follow you. <laughs> so are you going that, to... That, that, I, I'll wait till that's proven, okay? <laughs> because they haven't bugged me yet. <clears throat> because I don't use Tumblr. I'm safe, if that's what you're telling me. <laughs> so, Dan, what about you? Like, what's your drive, motivation, and also well, inspiration? For my day job, it's because it pays the bills. But of course, in, 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 when it comes to music, I do wish I could make music a career. Unfortunately, it's very hard to move up on that uh, career path to become a full-time musician. Either the discipline of having to do it on a regular basis kills the inspiration and uh, creative spirit, or the fact that you know it doesn't put food on the table very easily. So the motivation for me to do music is that I believe that it's a really good way to express. As you can see, uh, during the karaoke last night and during the concert, I think it's safe to say we all had fun, didn't we? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Only three people? <laughs> Come on, did we have fun? Yeah. Exactly, right there. People love the karaoke and seeing the smiles on people's faces, just enjoy the music, regardless whether you're singing along or dancing along or cringing along. <laughs> Shake your tail. Shake your tail. Yeah, or regardless of how you're enjoying it, if you're smiling and enjoying it, that's what I believe music should do, and that is my motivation. Yeah. All right. So next up is. Well, once you're motivated and wanting to go, you have to find your way of find the thing that you want to do because I am a podcaster. Uh, I'm a photographer. Yeah, and also Dan here is a man of all trades. Master of none. <laughs> but so, um, be, be writing, art, video, photo, even audio, or live stream, well, find what you want and go for it. So moving on to the next one is, well, after you find the concept, what will be your topic? Because MLP is one of them. Well, we're the con for ponies. But gaming's popular. I heard that one game with the shoot bangs is really popular. Insert shoot bang game here. You know what? Sorry, what? Shoot bang games. Shoot, oh, shoot what game? first person shooter shoot shoot game. Shoot bang. Oh, okay. And yeah. <laughs> I heard it's really popular. What was it called? Fort, Fort G? Fortnite. Oh, Fort Day, Fort Day. Oh, okay. okay. Fort Day, Week, Fort Week. Uh -oh. So, wait, I thought it was Overnight Watch G. Overnight. <laughs> Overnight Watch G6? Yeah, yeah. You'll <laughs> be obsolete in two weeks, a new one will come out soon. <laughs> and Tom Clancy's Battlegrounds. <laughs> Don't forget the new one, Left for Life! Left for Life! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Right for Life! <laughs> Fight for Life! Oh. Yes. No, that, that's a realism game based in the Trump presidency. <laughs> oh. 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 Alright, yeah. All right. so, point and click RPG. <laughs> so, besides that, you could also do writing or food. Food is an interesting one because it means so many things. It could be eating, taking photos of it, or even cooking. Here's the best one it can be Kit Kat. Oh yeah! It's such a good, like, I never knew Kit Kat existed in so many flavors other than chocolate and uh, perhaps some, the green tea one and uh, you know, the space one. The <laughs> <laughs> space one? The space one. The space one? Okay. Alright, alright, right. So, the space pistachio one. Oh, all right. uh, where's the space pistachio one? <laughs> Oh, he went for lunch. Oh, oh, right. It's oh. Kit Kat's probably been eaten. <laughs> yeah. so. He took a break. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, next up is tool of the trade. So once you're doing, sorry, once you found out what you want to do, you got to do it with something, tools. So writing is pen and paper. That's obvious. And notepad. a word processor. Or notepad, yes. Yeah, notepad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Microsoft Word. So, who here uses Microsoft Word anymore? I think we all do. Microsoft Word. So it's just me and Google Docs. Then. Yeah. yeah. Not Google Master Race. Word SmackDown. Word Star. You're alone on that one, Andy. You have your fan on your phone. Oh well. Yeah. So also art is pencil and paper with drawing programs like Illustrator, Sci, Photoshop, and so on. Microsoft. Yo, yo. There's one right there. 
and videos, you, you know, you know the list, like, you could use so many things. I, I don't need to go on. And if you really need to find out how to do anything, the internet is there. Yeah, the internet Uncle and YouTube has tons of tutorials for many softwares. The thing is, there are sometimes this urge to use a certain software, but when you look online and you want to learn how to use the software, a great place to search is it Pirate Bay, it's YouTube. <laughs> So Search on YouTube and look for, soft, look for the name of the software you want to do and look at how many tutorials there are. See if these tutorials align with what you want to do. Because if you want to edit video in Microsoft Excel, that's a bit of a bad idea. <laughs> you can edit video in Photoshop, which is a little bit of a bad idea as well, but it is possible. So, but if, if, let's just say editing video in Photoshop to achieve a result of like per frame animation is what you want to do, then go ahead and do that. But you want to have a bad time. Not necessarily. Photoshop is good at achieving certain things. So if it can achieve what you want it to achieve, use the best tool for the job. True, true. Video but editing with Google's Movie Maker. Oh! Well, you know, editing the MBS show with Photoshop, well, that is a different story. Mm, I, I never tried it before. I, I need to try and see Not on goes. that. I don't want that laptop to go up in flames. Sounds like a challenge, Norman. <laughs> it's only oh, yeah. a GTX 780, okay? Okay. So anyhow, only. After only. you decided to create your content, now you need to upload it somewhere. So usually with videos, it's YouTube, the emotion, and Dropbox. Dropbox. <laughs> no, okay. Um, if, share, you, if you if you are into a bit of uh, if you are into for share. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rapid share. Yeah. Mega. Mega. <laughs> okay. No, but um, if you if you actually look up some places, you see. Before the uh, advent of YouTube, the internet was a little bit more difficult to get into because things were really expensive. A long time ago, a little server to host a website could cost you hundreds of dollars a month. Now you can get places that let you host websites for free. You can, you, you can do this on GitHub, you can do this on Netlify and many other places. In fact, our con websites are hosted on these kind of, these kind of platforms because we're cheap. So basically, um, the internet has become a place where you can find a lot of places to host your stuff. Um, find the best place for the medium that you have. YouTube is best for video, of course, of but in course. this case, they noticed that they can use it for a podcast, which is just audio, and it works as well. It's a match, it's a match. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, you can also do podcasts via Twitch. So that's something new. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you want to live stream it, sure, which is also something we put down, uh, or we didn't put down. Uh, you can live stream it like we did earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the technologies keep coming out. Like some of you may not know, Facebook now has live audio which is live without video for those of us with crappy internet like Singtel we can use uh, what? No. what? <laughs> oh, oh, no. No. Wow. Dang, okay, dang. okay, let me rephrase that for those of us with crappy internet like Maxis you can okay. use yes. <laughs> that comes out. okay, you can, you can use this to just transmit audio instead of the video as well with it yeah, but that is not very easy to do I've tried it and it's not that easy but that's just a point. Post. I wouldn't know, I just use photos. <laughs> yeah, so we list down here a few websites that you could post your content at. Uh, DeviantArt for art, Instagram for photos. Well, DeviantArt too for photos, but usually Instagram is used for... What, what do people use Instagram for? Photos Self mostly. Art. Filters. Ah, no, yes. Serious, filters. Yeah, it's the artistic um, addition. Well, you know, I'm still of the opinion that Instagram helped to make use of how early handphone cameras weren't very good, but applying that filter gave it that retro effect to make it look like, you know, an instamatic photo. It's just a, it's a novelty. So basically putting your, what, iPhone 4 into a Leica? Thinking your iPhone 4 is a Leica. <laughs> no. Instagram is, uh, Instagram is, what do you call it? Lightbox for them. Lightroom, sorry, for them. Lightroom, Lightroom. Oh yeah, that can work. So, after you decide where you want to put it, it's knowing the audience when you, well, you want to start because as for the MBS show, it's usually aimed for, sorry, it's usually aimed at a younger audience. Uh, 30, we're, our lowest is, tar sorry, <laughs> our target goal is 13 and up. So we tend to be safe in what we do. But if you want to, well, if your aim is like, a 17 and older, you you do it appropriate to their age. Disclaimers, please. Disclaimers. Especially if you're going to use some language or photos which, again, the internet is very 
open to anyone. Okay. I mean, some of us have um, stated we're above 18 when we're not. Don't hide it. I know some of you, some, most of us have done it. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, right. Anyway, my point is, if you're going to do for, uh, your content for people who are of 13 and above, that means you plan to make it family safe, sure, that's good. If you want to put it for anyone who's older, a disclaimer, at least then some parent can't turn around and say that, why are you doing this for my kids? It's, 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 yeah. A PG yeah. or a disclaimer says, the site that you're entering has whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Like, Foul like, language, apparently. It, it apparently ticks people off. And cookies, you know. <laughs> so it's stupid warning. Yeah. But it's mostly de dependent on the content. <laughs> uh, dependent on the content, you aim it for that. So, uh, for example, if you're doing a pony podcast or pony something, make your content age appropriate. That's me personally. If you want to go beyond, that's up to you. And if you're doing Overwatch or Rainbow Six or whatever, well, you are allowed to do, or well, or, or allowed it's to say, game. yeah, you, you're allowed to, but YouTube doesn't like that. Of course not. Yeah. No. YouTube likes cat videos. That's all they oh, do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, anyway, uh, there's another thing that also came about when you advance into uh, recent technology. As all of you know, Facebook knows a little too much about most of us. Yeah. Now, th the reason I say this is because, uh, one, when you design for your age, target demographic in, in terms of age, be open to changing that. The reason is when you do live streams, upload videos to Facebook, Facebook actually tracks a lot of data about who watches that video. Now you even have live view, which means the video isn't live, but you can actually see how many people are watching it with you in a little symbol on the top. They're actually piloting a new thing. And if you, go, if you own a Facebook page and go into the, this content settings, it can actually tell you which age group watches the video the most. And you can actually look back into your live streams, look back into your content and see, oh, this video attracted viewers of 25 to 35. If you're aiming for 18 to 20 and then you see a 25 to 35, you're either has bro, <laughs> or, or it's time to, you know, perhaps open up to doing stuff for the audience that it's really attracting. You can look into these insights. Some of these online analytics are ri Thanks, Dan. Some of these analytics are really handy to have. Who are you? I'm gonna message him now. <laughs> Guys, no, 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 no. <laughs> But anywho, uh, spam him, spam him. <laughs> but but anywho, moving on. This meal goes with all. Everyone. No 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 no. Oh my. So anywho, look at everyone. So anywho, after you've done everything and established what you want to do, try to be well, one step ahead and. Challenge yourself. So if you were playing games, you could do things like, hey, maybe I should play the game with a banana. That could work. Do you like bananas? Yeah. Or so I still like bananas. No, you don't like bananas. <laughs> or do some other challenges. Uh, Jill, what were you saying before when we were talking about this one? Uh, in regards to what? Oh, uh, challenging yourself. Or oh, oh, okay. Um, I, this was a little chat we, I had with Norman a couple of days ago. A particular player is playing Seven Days to Die. I'm not sure if, how, if you all know that. It's relatively popular. Relatively. So the, one, of the, one of the YouTubers I was following, he stated, I'm going to go to this tall building and I'm going to stay in there for seven days and not come out. And I'm only going to depend on the resources I find in there. It was a challenge. I think he actually completed the seven days, but uh, he, he had a lot of problems. So that's, that's what I, one of the suggestions that we were saying. Give yourself a small challenge in order to make it interesting. Anybody can survive in the wild. Can you survive with the minimal resources inside the building? That's what he did. For an example, I mean. And that can really put you over the edge in terms of people watching you. Like, I think there's this Twitch streamer that plays game with peripherals that are not meant to be played. I think what, uh, Dark Souls controllers. will... Yeah, yeah, Dark Souls <laughs> will get the hero controllers and so Steering on. wheels. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, do, yeah. so do those kind of things to well, stand out and challenge yourself. Those things will really put you out there. Uh, you don't have to play the entire game. For example, it's a game. You don't have to play the entire game, of course. It's just once in a while. Make a different challenge to perk the interest of your watchers, followers. Whatever. 
Yeah, yeah. And even sometimes you don't even really need to take much of a challenge. Because the other thing that the internet really has grown to love is watching people fail. <laughs> He's watching these epic fails in games, and I watch Siege fails because I am an epic fail at Siege myself. So <laughs> you'll see these kind of videos are, are epically funny to watch when people go in and screw up, and it's all in good fun where you're not scolding people in chat. <laughs> you know, you're actually watching them screw up, perhaps even learning something new. Yep, yep. Well, people do like to watch other people fail. It's quite sad, but... <laughs> oh, no, I mean... The, the, the fun factor is always there, yes. yes it, it's, it's true. It's fun, it's fun. It's all in good <laughs> fun, as long as you don't be mean about it. So, anyway, next one is, well, is when to... How often do you want to post your things? Like, the MBS show does a twice-a-week kind of post where we do regular content and also reviews. And some people do... The, do um, contents or upload contents at once a month, and some people do it once a year. Ain't that right, Dan? Hmm? Uploading stuff or creating content. Or how even often? Yeah, how often do you post? <laughs> well, for my day job, it's daily. But for, the, for other things, for music, it's inconsistent because like I say I do it when inspiration strikes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or even doing a convention. That's once a year, right? Uh, depends. Uh, that depends. depends. <laughs> for, me, but, for me, it's, yeah. like, it's like I'll put up whenever I go on holiday or something worth uh, posting. Like, um, this year alone, I probably post a total of like three times per year b due to a holiday I took. This convention and the upcoming convention that it's in November. Uh, so, yeah. The Friendship Express? Huh? Yeah, Friendship Express. Ah, the Friendship Express. So, the banner is over there for it. Oh, uh, okay. So, okay. So, basically, this year alone, I only have three posts, but my posts are not one picture, two pictures, of course. I'll I tell you. People will not bother. It's about my entire holiday. I've been in Singapore. I'm going to be in Singapore for three, maybe four days. There'll be photos of Twilight Adventures here. So, what, 90 off pictures, maybe, give or take? 90 odd, wow. Dude, I love taking nice. photos. Okay, 90 odd unique pictures, not 90 odd. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It's, I, I tell a story when I okay, do my photos, good. okay? <laughs> Okay, um, I just want to add something to this frequency and schedule uploading. Now, uh, my company sent me for YouTube Certified Partner training. So, yes, I am a YouTube Certified Partner, but it's not for my channel, it's for my company. Though, we've been talked about, we talked about these three types of content. We call it help, we call it hero, I forgot the last one. Uh, the three, hub, hub, help, and hero. Hub content is content that's regularly uploaded. So, like the MBS show, it would be their episodes. It comes regularly and people come back to watch the next episode. Then there is help content, and these are timeless episodes. Things like um, how, not how to basic, but like how <laughs> to prepare something, like perhaps the recording of this panel, which talks about how to be content creators. These videos will remain relevant for a long amount of time. They don't need to be uploaded very often, but because they are relevant to people searching on how to become a content creator, it will be relevant when that search comes up and it will stay on a certain level of views, con keep consistently bringing in views. Then there's hero content. Hero content is that one moment, that, that inspirational speech that someone made that went up, or, you know, kofefe. That is like a hero moment thing, or something that happens that doesn't happen very often. It's one off thing. Perhaps uh, even last night's karaoke. We posted that once, the view hits spike, and then after two weeks when everyone has forgotten about it, the video hits just pretty much become non-existent. It does out. <laughs> yes, so your channels will most likely have a mix of these three types of content, the hub, the help, and the hero. Not only on the hub. <laughs> uh, yeah, hub, help, and hero content. So uh, the MPS show has their hub content, which is their reviews and their episodes. They will have their help content like this, and their hero content would probably be, I don't know... Uh, Larson interview. Larson interview, oh. yeah. They, they, so this, uh, you have a mix of these three contexts. Thank you for that. I did not know that. <laughs> I did not until YouTube taught me. Oh, no, cool. So next up, we'll be tagging your work. Hashtag tag your work. Hashtag tag. Yep. Yes. Hashtag, so, hashtag. <laughs> so hashtag, anyway, hashtag, yeah. Hashtag don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> so anywho, um, back in the days when I was starting doing this, I do not understand tagging. To me, it was a foreign concept till I saw the benefits of it. Especially on Tumblr, if you were to look for something, looking at the search bar will grant you well, certain things. Like if I was looking for cute kitties, I type cat, all the tags with cat will appear. So tagging does help. 
Yeah, I kind of wish I knew that a while ago. I haven't tagged my work at all. Yeah. Hashtag start now. <laughs> it's, a, it's something that we sometimes overlook. When I first started, that little box on YouTube that says insert tags, I didn't bother with it. But then when you yeah. realize that there's so much more to your video than you fit in the description usually, like YouTube videos, some of them have amazingly long descriptions. Those tags that you put in will help to prioritize the words that you want people to find. Like if you're doing a video, like the one talking about Project Saffron, the, the priority of the video is not Saffron, we're not talking about the food. But we want people, it to show up when people search for MLP and India. That's why we put that into the text. I mean, we will put that into the text because the video's not up yet. It helps to generate, it helps to push the video up in those searches. And not when someone's looking to actually cook saffron masala. <laughs> <laughs> and a good example is when I did the MDS show about four years ago, Ben? 2012. Six years. Six years, oh wow. Right. So when I did it six years ago, it was climbing steadily, I think what the YouTube page has about 800 plus subs. Oh nice. Yeah. But when I created something new for another project, I think I started that one, the beginning of this year, it gotten about 300 plus followers with just tagging on Tumblr. So the power of tagging does really help. By the way, they have 822 subscribers. That one jumps from point to point, like sometimes it was four and then three, two, and then jump to three again. Okay. Uh, All right, boys. All right. So next one is my favorite topic to talk yeah, about. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes people will disagree with your content, your views, and sometimes they will love you regardless. So take it in stride. And I know that when people disagree with you, you want to go in a YouTube comments war. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't. No, yeah, don't you do can that. Never I know it's fun, but don't. This, this was, take, this was uh, something about this was, spoke, was uh, brought up yesterday during the uh, art panel. It's the same thing. Basically, if you draw something, you put your work up, people are going to like it, people are not going to like it. They're going to tell you they don't like it. They're going to tell you they love it. You take it in strides. Listen. Don't get angry. Don't get upset. Listen to what they say. And then better yourself. The best way to beat the, the haters is to make your work better and then make them eat their own words, honestly. True, 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 true. There, there are some people who will always find fault with you. Finding fault is another game altogether where they will just find some reason to want to belittle you. It can be from the most minute details, like um, the spelling website on Project Saffron's website, mm. or uh, spelling the error, or it can be up to a macro stupid thing, like why are you putting it on YouTube? You should put this on Daily Motion or something like that. People will find fault with a lot of things. But digging out and, you know, Scraping the fluff away and finding the exact thing that you can that can help you improve is very important. True, 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 true. And if people give you well, negative feedback, don't view it as something bad. View it as something to better yourself. Because I got a few comments before on the MBS show saying that the show is tilted, the show is too long and whatnot. And I change it into a more lively content where we don't really have a script anymore. We, do, we go off the rails, we can talk about ponies and then suddenly we talk about Overwatch and then we go back to ponies. Then here's another thing. Don't forget that if somebody actually bothered to comment on your work, that means they saw it. And, always and that's a viewer. Yep. Now here's the thing that happened a few years ago, I want to share this and uh, this has something to do with my friend in the back, uh, Rachel, now Denisa. What happened is that we announced Cantalot University uh, for Singapore. It was a convention that we were doing here in Singapore in 2014. And on SBS, which is Singapore Brony Society, I was an artwork that said, this is a lousy name. Don't call a convention a university. Change it, please. And uh, the committee was going berserk and going like, Daniel, why did you name the con that we called? Whatever. And I said, like, guys, guys, we just received our first fan art. <laughs> Look at things in different perspectives, mm. you know. It, it's just because that someone said something negative, it means that they actually saw it, they paid attention to it, and it pissed them off to a point that you made an impact in their opinion. Yeah. Yeah, but personally... I have nothing against you, Rachel, don't worry. I really have nothing against you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so personally for me, I would think that... Um, I, the way I look at things, especially when I used to do fan fiction, that had a lot of people who used to turn around and say that the way I wrote, the way I used... You shouldn't use italics in this sense. I, I, it's like, 
you, the only person that can make you angry is yourself. Okay? When someone gives you a bad comment, when someone tells you, you're an idiot, you can either go and say, you're an idiot back! Or, if that's, what you, idiot. No, if that's what you think. Sure. Or because at the end of the day, when you smile at your enemy, it pisses them off even more. You win. <laughs> or, or my favorite, I know I'm an idiot, that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> there, there are a lot of things that we're crazy Admit it. <laughs> People, uh, there, a lot of us in this hall, musicians like, musicians, artists, vendors, we're crazy being here in itself. I know. Hmm? Sorry? And we run this thing, we're crazy. Yeah, we're really nuts. <laughs> and we all love you for it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. So, next up is, well, oh, okay, here we go. Yep. <laughs> so after doing all of this, and you forgot you the question mark slide. <laughs> My bad. But anyway, after doing all this for a while, you think, hey, I really enjoy this. I want to get a profit out of this. And well, or maybe a helping hand. Two yep. coins work more than none. Yep, yep, true, true. And for certain situations, I'll let you guys know that there's multiple ways to earn some bits. And that's through Patreon, Coffee, PayPal. Well, those are some options, or maybe not. And don't, dis don't, don't get discouraged if you get few or no supporters. And, well, just keep doing what you love. If you get some bits out of it, that's awesome. There are not many people out there who actually can make a living off Patreon. There are quite a few. Sorry, I, I just contradicted myself. <laughs> Sorry. There are people out there who do make a profit. They do make a living with their, with their Patreon account. But the numbers aren't that high. I suggest... Start a Patreon account if you feel like, uh, you know, seeing if people are willing to pay for work, commissions, whatever, and go for there, go from there. The, like, like Norman said, if nobody supports, don't get too discouraged. Just keep on trying. Yes, and uh, don't, okay, we don't mean to break anyone's Think hearts here. Don't be, dis don't be disillusioned by the fact that you can make a living off YouTube. You can, but you need to be someone who really... Okay, it's a lot of combinations of skill, marketing, luck, and a lot of things that are within and also not within your control. So, you look at things like Gangnam Style, it has no real reason to become viral, yet it became epically viral. And these are the things that, that no one can explain until today how these things got viral. What does the fox say? Uh, what other things? The, 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 the Harlem Shake. These videos have no reason to be particularly viral, but yet they are. So. People look at them like, hey, I can make a living like them. Or when you look at Markiplier and PewDiePie, these kind of channels generate yes. tons of income. But the thing is, it's actually a lot of factors that are beyond your control. Massive luck of one of them. Yes. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> I mean that in all seriousness, don't quit your day job to try this. Because it's a real risk you're going to take. You're putting, you're going, if you want to try to make, run a profit. A lot of people started without profit in mind. A lot of people started wanting to do it because they loved it and the community response was so good that they could monetize it. There are some people who actually have lost a lot of spirit on their channel because they turned to monetization. Try not to fall into that trap. Yeah, for example, the MBS show, we only started Patreon two years ago, I think, what, last year or two years ago? Mm -hmm. So we've been running, what, for six years now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so previously we didn't really intended on doing any well but you uh, gave it a shot anyway yeah, right <laughs> we, we didn't intend on making money out of it but somebody said oh you guys should review this i'll pay good money for it and you know what okay and, and it starts <laughs> people believe people will understand that everything comes at a cost even if you have all the equipment just fall out of the sky into your house your time is cost as well and time is money so therefore to pay you even a small amount to help you offset the, the expenses. Like on YouTube, hosting is free, but if you have your own website, like owning the, the mbsshow.com domain, it costs money. And these expenses, people who are loyal enough to want to see you survive and continue will help you. Yep, yep. And sometimes it's what, hardware that you need to buy, like this fancy doohiki, majiki dinging, whatever it is I bought. It's not cheap. It's taser. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a fancy lighter. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a fancy lighter. <laughs> and also, what the toilet plush? I know that's not cheap. Yeah. Um, honestly, I think I actually forgot. I got this from a friend years ago, uh, and I, I was that the like four years ago? Or was it now? 
Because I, I, I'm, I'm well, honestly, I don't know. Four years ago, now probably the stock is lower because the lines discontinued. Uh, sadly. Yep. So uh, apparently Norman helped me on that. He said uh, on Amazon you can still get it. Um, nah, it's okay. Yeah, I'm happy but with that's one. Amazon. Yeah, I'm happy with one. <laughs> so that is, is an option. And well, that's it for it, I guess. Well, that's, so, it, that's it for our content anyway. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions for our two gentlemen here from the MBS show? Or just questions of content creation in general? Or any questions at all, actually. Now you've heard, you've heard from podcasters, and later this evening you will hear from people who make visual content. These are the MBS show people work on audio because podcasting is an audio, audio medium. And all of you have different applications. When you have a podcast on iTunes, you can listen to it passively while cooking, while driving. Don't watch MLP while driving. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you can't do that. So there are variations of content out there. Yep. And do you have any questions for audio content? And um, since I'm here as well, I'll take questions about music if you have any. Yes, go ahead. So, uh, just a simple question from a guy who tends to ramble. All right. Uh, you, you do you do audio stuff, so there's a lot of talking, and you start. You mentioned that you start exploring different topics. How do you control the length of each segment? Like, do you have like a set timer? Are you looking at it like, okay, I'm only going to talk for so long, or when inspiration strikes, you just go like, I'm just going to keep going. Well, that's a really good question. Um, usually what I tend to do is set a schedule in mind where, okay, we should record for an hour at best. But if it's a very long topic, for example, if we're reviewing Zootopia, Zootopia movie what, is almost two hours long, so we need to decide how are we going to do this? Are we going to do scene by scenes, themes, and so on, and decide on how many people are going to be on board for that project. So, a, a two-person sorry, a two -person project would cost. Sorry, a two-person project is easier because it's better back and forward. If you add in one more person, then you need to decide. Oh, um, am I going to let that person talk and then I talk and then they talk, or are we? And then he invites me and just plus six more people. Oh yeah, that's true. So, it's usually uh, deciding on what you want to do and so on. But for example, the MBS show news podcast. What I usually do is set a well, quote-unquote script where, okay, this is the show news for this week. Usually it's three to five and so on. And by that, and by that point, I usually say, okay, um, this is the topic for this week. And by the way, this is not rehearsed. We do it live. If there's flubs and whatnot, Mr. Snip Snip will help. So we'll just go through the news and I'll ask, oh, Dan, what do you think of this? Thing, and he'll talk and I'll uh, keep track of what's going on and oh you what do you think of this topic going on and so on and then I'll button it and find it <laughs> which, yes. which is also something to think about when you're doing a podcast and when you bring people on controlling them can be difficult and I think Norman would know this the best he's handled so many guests he's handled guests many people in this hall have been guests on the MBS show and he's also spoken to some esteemed guests from the show like Amy Keating Rogers Michelle Creever M.A. Larson uh, and Ellie Heath, who else? Uh, Gabe. Uh, okay, yeah, Black Griffin as well. And he's talked to so many people. It kind of comes as a skill to him to be able to control the flow of a conversation. And uh, a word that we hear a lot is the segue. Oh, yeah. He's trying to move between topics in a very swift manner. Or and it's an art form in itself. Or feel terribly at it that it is an art form to itself. <laughs> yeah, feel terribly or pun your way out of it in a sense, yeah. Yeah, thanks, over. <laughs> I think it's a mix of both, but particularly for the MPS show, Norman said earlier that we used to have a script, and he used to be very strict about it, and you see, he'll send it to me on Google Docs, and if I don't follow it, a nuclear bomb will be hitting in the house. But he knows where I live. Pardon, uh, what was the question again? He asked, do you read from a script or oh. do you wing it? Uh, okay, um, way back when, in the first two years, I was really uh, stickle for it. Like, we must read through the script, we must read through the script. The script is law. And then I noticed something. Oh, um, trying to create a script is hard. And, oh, this is hard work and nobody really pays attention to it. So, why should I put in effort into something that nobody's paying attention to it? So, 
it's shortcuts in life where okay if I can cut this content here and it will help better the show then good do you have anything to add? not really yeah, that, that kind of covers it all mostly okay here's <laughs> a tip for myself and this is what I learned on the job write your own script try not to get someone to write it for you when you have someone to write your script for you that person has to either know you super well that he knows how you flow and how you talk what happens at work where I work is that sometimes when, we, when I have to write a script for somebody else, they end up stuttering on camera, they lose track of a sentence halfway or something, and when they write a script for me, I end up, I end up having a similar problem. And I read from a teleprompter, which is actually a little glass pane in front of a camera that scrolls the text for me to read. No, I don't memorize the news. So when this thing scrolls, when I write my own scripts, I know exactly how I speak, I know exactly how I want to present a certain line, and I write it that way, only as a reminder about what I want to do. Basically, the winging part is the script. I wing the script, and then I just read from the prompter as to what I wanted to wing. I treat the script as a reminder. I don't treat the script as sacred. And when you write your own scripts, and you know yourself really well, that script will do wonders for you. Oh yeah, one more thing I need to add. Um, the show notes is kind of the structure for everything because uh, if you guys don't know or haven't seen how a podcast works, it's usually two people talking. And two people talking can be fun, but if it's not structured, it can go over time. Like, I know some podcasts can go for three hours or so on, but some people that I work with tend to wake up at certain time in the day, especially for um, Americans. If I were to do my podcast at 10 p.m., they would be waking up at 10 a.m. or even 8 a.m. and so on. Yeah, uh, think about um, talk, talking about interviews. There's three types of interviews that you should know about. The structure, the semi-structure, and the unstructured. The structured interview is where you have a set of questions and you ask only those questions and nothing more. This usually comes into play when you're interviewing politicians and large and big public figures. The reason for this is usually you send them your questions in advance, they prepare their answers, and they're able to answer you better. The semi-structure is when you have a set of questions, but you also throw in follow-up questions when you get an interesting response. And lastly, the unstructured is playing completely freestyle, no set of questions, or even if there are, it's just like a, just like a little note like, ask them about X. Then after that you can go wonder and be like, how was it doing it? And how do you feel working with so-and-so person and stuff? <laughs> you actually wing that kind of interview. The way we do it on the MBS show is kind of semi-structured. Uh, not anymore. I mean, even with like, back Michelle, then. maybe no, that, uh, uh, that was back then. Um, the recent one that happened with Michelle at... Uh, yeah, uh, Project Yeah, Project Yeah. No script off my head. And those kind of questions are, well, uh, how do I put it? Think about it this way. If you have answered the same question thousand of times, you are going to have a well, script memorized where, oh yeah, I was here and doing that at this time and it was fun. Now just imagine saying, Michelle, what kind of games do you like to play? Those are the kind of questions that they're not ready and those kind of answers are the best. By the way, she likes to play Halo 3. Yeah, the, the, the thing is that I wonder if that's still the same. kind of questions in mind that Usually, there's, there's no right or wrong with this. Sometimes you have to come to an agreement with the person you're interviewing and how you want to, you want to do it. You want to prepare the questions beforehand, go with a semi structure, or completely wing the entire interview. And I can tell you that the, the, the second and the third, the semi structure and unstructured, require practice. Talk to your friends about it. <laughs> Any more questions? Hello? Uh, uh, as podcasters, um, you, you, you are. Um, some of the most successful podcasters in our uh, in our community, and uh, I would like to ask, what's the what's the hardest thing to you know? What's the hardest thing you had to go through as podcasters trying to enter such a niche market, Thank which you. is podcast? I mean, it's not it's not exactly the most popular uh, genre or medium of uh, of, of uh, content uh, in in our uh, in our community, let alone in any community, really. But you guys seem to have not just been a niche market, yours, but also. Um, you know, also paved the way for a lot of other um, podcasting uh, groups throughout our 
the secret, the secret is really just do it. Like for me, I was inspired by others, and I decided to try and do it my own. Um, the few reasons I started was I was in the Brony community, and I, before we all, yeah, true, true. <laughs> uh, but beforehand, I listened to video game podcasts and thought, hey, that would be fun to do. But I don't have friends who share the same interests until ponies. And six years later, I'm here right now. Two words, healthy competition. That's true then. There were other Brony podcasts. There was Brony Time with Alpha and Five Iron. There was Brony Build. And these podcasts, we actually used to cross over to some of them. We oh, actually yeah. were on Brony Build when they were still around. We had uh, Five Iron and Alpha join us on the show sometimes. And we cross promote each other. We're here to help each other. And well, why we say healthy competition is that we don't let this, we, we do try to do our own things, and we try and compete in the sense of having a diverse spread. So like the FDS show managed to interview Michelle Pieper, let's try and get someone, Michelle Pieper to talk about something else, make it more exciting. Doesn't mean that they're playing the FDS show down. You know, they're trying to take the same interview and make it better by asking questions that weren't asked by us. So the healthy competition and also cross promotion with others who are in a similar medium helps to bring listeners from other podcasts in. And because the podcast is not the cassette that you can eject, that you have to eject from your car to play another one, you can have like, one person can listen to multiple podcasts, adding another one to their list if they like it and it aligns with their interests, that helps to build the fan base. And also, once you establish yourself as well, uh, a podcaster, in this, in my case, it's a Brody podcaster, try to spread out a bit, like see what you can try, because for the MBS show, we've touched upon things that are not ponies. For example, uh, Miracle Ladybug. Who knows about that? Woo. Yeah, yeah, we got fans. Woo. Woo. So yeah, we, we reviewed that, but in our own style where I know Silver Quill and Sapphire Heart Song don't like that show. So let's see how much I can torture them with it. It's a lot of fun. Actually, I just want to ask you guys, how many of you heard of The Path to See PonyCon? Yes, the part of C-PonyCon is C-PonyCon's podcast that we did last year to help you prepare for 2017's convention. Unfortunately, due to a lack of resources, we couldn't do it again this year. We actually talked about things that we were doing. We actually toured all five cities in Southeast Asia. We started in Manila, then we went to Singapore, Manila, Bangkok, no. Manila, Singapore, Bangkok, uh, Manila, Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, Bangkok, Jakarta, and then back to Bangkok for the con. We went and we talked about the convention, we talked about how we came up with it and things like that. We put all the recordings on YouTube, but we also had some smaller episodes where we talked about our progress in our planning. That's how we kept people informed about it. But because it wasn't really well received, we kind of put on a topic block. And well, if you guys want to try, well, podcasting, streaming, or whatever it is, give it a shot. Who knows? You might enjoy it and other people might enjoy what you do. And feel free to change the medium if you find something that works better. Like if you, if you, if people think you talk too much, really, I say this in all seriousness. Look at the account called How to Basic. He doesn't say a word. <laughs> I mean, he, he's a wasteful idiot. Yeah. But look at the views he gets. It, it's weird. There's a lot of funny things that happen on YouTube. But if you find something else that works, don't be afraid of changing. All right. So, any more? If Final call? Okay. 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 Uh, uh, let me ask you a question. It's very technical. Uh, I've been trying to start my own podcast, but I'm actually not sure if you guys um, do the podcast it live. I, um, do both of you just live and have an uh, audience? Or maybe you record it first and then stream it after and get uh, feedback from people because I know that some podcasts are like that. Right, um, um, however, my question is, uh, how do you actually set up to have a Skype call or Discord call while um, having a recording. recording and live? And how do you actually make sure that does it work? All right. Um, <laughs> first, before before, before, before you launch. Yeah. So uh, first things first, a few testings beforehand, like few tests oh, about how. <laughs> So, After um, the video, please record a message. So, so it's basically a lot of testing before going live or before posting. 
So it's like, okay, so how are we going to do this? How am I going to record my audio? How am I going to record his audio? Um, if you're using Skype, Skype and Preach Recorder does work, but Skype audio quality sucks. So use Discord. It's now, time to teach Skype. <laughs> so on Discord, how do I get the other person's audio? Um, the way I work it is I use two different audio recording. Um, one was Audacity, the other one was Studio One. Studio One covers my end and Audacity covers the uh, internal of the computer. That kind of okay, but the person on the other end is based on your connection. So what I'm trying to do now is, okay, I record mine, uh, you record yours, and once that's done, the editor gets the audio track and he edits it. And that's the best way, but if you can't get the other person to send the audio to you on time or promptly, then there will be trust issues and instead of a bi-weekly podcast or a weekly podcast, there will be a podcast about once a month and so on. So that's how I usually do it. And as for uh, tech, I think that's about it really. I mean, uh, it's based on how dedicated you guys are on uh, editing it or recording it and so on. So you don't actually uh, interact with your uh, audience live? Oh, okay. There's another one. Um, that one is another story altogether because I always wanted to go live, but I got no idea how. But in this scenario here, just imagine this is what you're asking and this is what's going on. We, when you're doing a live show, you don't really tend to edit things out. Like um, if I um, try to say um, stuff, um, that usually gets cut out in the editing process. But if it's live, how are you going to um, cut um, um, that um, out? That's actually something to talk about. And, and believe me, to some regular people or viewers, it doesn't seem like a big thing, but that little red light that says you're live can make some people freeze up completely. They go complete BSOD when you when you, you tell them you're live. And it's stage fright? Yeah, it's stage fright, but stage fright sometimes even transcends into online live audiences. It can happen. So therefore, um, that is also what sets, in the music, it's what sets aside a recording artist and a performer. Mm -hmm. Recording artists can, you know, as I said, as you were talking about, yesterday, some of us go through 35, 40 takes just to get the perfect recording. But a performer doesn't have a backspace button. The same way a live podcaster doesn't have the backspace button. It's the same way why we prefer texting over phone calls. So true. Well, no, I prefer phone call. <laughs> Hey Norman, can I borrow your car? I'm gonna pick up the. I mean, I'm gonna go and fetch my mom from the bus stop. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Oh yeah, sure. So um, if there's no more, I think we can wrap up. Yeah. Hey, no, I'm, uh, I'm actually taking a flight this weekend to go for a pony. I mean, a business conference in Singapore. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So anywho, um, any last questions? Because we're out of time. So calling once, calling twice. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much.